just a minute. Yes. Yes. So we are on. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So, sir, I'll uh, basically just to take you through what we, what I want to do with this video. It's I read an article on you and how your your administration out there took steps to ace the social policy, uh, social distancing that's going on. The steps that you guys took to uh, take precautions in Nagaland, and I want to make a story out of it. I make documentaries, so I'm going to make it turn into a story. It won't be a journalistic interview. I'm not a journalist. It's just going to be a conversation that we shall have. So I'll just ask a few basic questions, and if you just go ahead and tell me. So I'll take out the story. Yeah. Can you start, sir? Yes, please. Okay. So first, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to us. Right. Uh, I'm Thavasilan. I'm the Deputy Commissioner of Moon District of Nagaland. I'm a 2012 Bath IIS officer. Wait, sorry, sorry. Just could you repeat that again, sir? There was a glitch. So I, my name is Thavasilan. I'm a 2012 Bath IIS officer. I'm currently posted as Deputy Commissioner of Moon District of Nagaland. It's been my tenure here thus far has been about uh, two and a half years. Uh, so, um, I'm from the Nagaland Kada. I'm basically from Chennai, Tamil Nadu. So, that's 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 a very brief uh, profile about me. I, I am an I am Ahmedabad grad and, and uh, you know, I was working uh, while I took this exam and I, I cleared the exam and then quit my private job and then I joined the civil services. So, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay, sir. And uh, so, could you, how would you describe Nagaland to us? Could you just talk about Nagaland as a state as, as it is? Right. So, so uh, you know, essentially, for 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 most people uh, in, in the rest of the country, you know, northeast is, is is more or less like a black box. You know, no one knows what's in there because uh, for, for for pretty much the entirety of their lives, most people don't get to travel in this part of the uh, country. So, uh, you know, for me, uh, the first time uh, uh, that that I'd landed up in Nagaland, that that was like the first time in the northeast per se you know i've been to Cal calcutta but that was pretty much the far farthest the uh, towards the east that i that i'd been so uh, uh, so you know when 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 i landed up here and then started working you you start of true uh, truly start realizing the diversity of the country so uh, uh, you know the people here are amazing uh, extremely hospitable people uh, uh, you know uh, beautiful beautiful locations and uh, the northeast as a whole is is, is a part that, that us and the people from the rest of the country have to you know make a conscious effort to 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 you know at least visit once and see see the diversity uh, themselves so beautiful place beautiful people amazing uh, amazing um, a talent uh, a wonderful uh, uh, wonderfully kind hearted and hospita hospitable yeah so okay sir could you tell us about the people that live there? Could you just talk about the local population, the local crowd, the local people? What they do to survive? What is it that they do? And how do they survive? And how do they live life? Their ways of life. You could just uh, throw some information on that. Throw some light sure. on that. Sure. So, so if, if you look at the Northeast as a whole, I mean, uh, people club club all the seven states, you know, plus Sikkim into the Northeast. But then every every state has its own unique features. So Nagaland, uh, again, is very different from, from Manipur or Assam or Tripura or Mizoram. So uh, you can't like, you know, uh, bracket them into a single or stereotype them into uh, like very similar people because they this extreme amounts of diversity even within the Northeast. So Nagaland has, uh, you know, about 17 uh, uh, recognized tribes. So when I say the word tribe, it's, it's not, in, not, not, not in the sense, uh, you know, that, that we might uh, refer to uh, uh, the tribes in, in, you know, say, say uh, in some parts of Tamil Nadu or, or, or Karnataka or Jharkhand or, 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 or Chhattisgarh. So they, they're very, they, again, very, very different. Uh, uh, you know, typically when, when you say the word tribe, people uh, sort of uh, attribute certain amount of backwardness or, or, or uh, uh, you know, old ways of living. But then uh, the people here are as modern as, as you can find, uh, you, um, I, People you can find anywhere else in the country. So, so the word tribe is just just that. It's it's just a term. But so we have 17 recognized tribes. So Moon District, uh, where I'm the uh, district collector, the district magistrate. So, uh, is is uh, one of the larger districts of of Nagaland. Uh, so the population, according to uh, the 2011 census, was about 2.5 uh, lakhs. So currently it would be somewhere in the vicinity of 2.9 to 3 lakhs, uh, given that it's been another 10 years. So. Uh, Nagaland mostly people uh, are are agrarian, so it's an agrarian society. Uh, 
uh, primary industries are are much more than you know the secondary and the tertiary ones. So uh, uh, the economy is is the lifeline of the economy is agriculture. So uh, uh, so that's 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 broadly about about Nagaland as a state and Mohan as a district. So Mohan, if, if if I have to go go into a specific, uh, you know, uh, give you some specific features of my district. So it's it's inhabited by the Konyak tribe. Okay, it's K O N Y A K. So Konyaks are are the largest numerically the largest tribe amongst all the all the tribes in Nagaland. So. Uh, um, uh, the the Konyaks also live in in, in in Myanmar. So my district has like a 130 kilometer long forest border with Myanmar. So uh, the uh, there are a lot of Konyaks on the other side of of Myanmar as well. They continue to have very very close ties with the people in my district. So uh, most of the Konyaks on the eastern side. Uh, so they they call them the eastern Konyaks, uh, Myanmarese Konyaks. So uh, essentially they depend on my district for essential commodities and healthcare and 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 a whole lot of other. Uh, other ser essential services. So uh, uh, one of the one of the uh, things is that I mean that part of Myanmar, which is closely bordering my uh, district, is is not very developed. So so they they tend to depend on uh, my district for most of their uh, work. Uh, so a lot of Konyaks in Arunachal Pradesh, uh, a lot of Konyaks in Assam. So so. Um, they uh, Konyaks are are you know amazingly kind-hearted people. Uh, they like. Uh, very very skilled at handicrafts, handlooms. Uh, they uh, they excel at you know traditional gun making. You know, this has been something that that that's been there for a very very long time. And yeah, that's pretty pretty much uh, you know about my district uh, in very broad terms. All right. And sir, yeah. um, could you tell me about uh, how did the COVID nineteen affect the state as a whole, Nagaland as a whole? How did COVID nineteen affect them? Affect the population, the local uh, population on. Right. So, so till now, you know, God's grace, we don't have a single positive case in Nagaland. No, so, so, could you start with uh, when the COVID nineteen outbreak happened, and then tell your story? Yeah. Okay. Right. So, uh, so uh, you know, I'll, I'll break it into two parts. One, uh, the state as a whole, and then, and then I'll focus on my district in particular. If that that's all right. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So, uh, you know, this this is something that that pretty much caught all states in the country by surprise because uh, this is this uh, one pandemic. Uh, just, just start your answer with the line when COVID nineteen outbreak happened in India because that is my cue. That is my uh, that's how the conversation will flow. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, right, so that I know that you know I can use this part here. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so when the COVID nineteen outbreak happened in India. Uh, you know, uh, like states in the rest of the country, Nagaland uh, started taking precautionary measures, uh, started putting in a whole series of uh, uh, steps uh, to ensure that, that the state was safeguarded from the outbreak. So uh, the national lockdown, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister announced it on the 24th and, you know, it started from the 25th. So uh, my state, uh, Nagaland, uh, we had gone in uh, for for a for a version of the lockdown on on the the, the intervening weekend, you know. Uh, so 22nd, 23rd itself, we had our own version of the lockdown already in place. We'd started shutting down our borders, restricting interdistrict travel, and and so on. So uh, so we we were like uh, you know we had a couple of days uh, uh, time ahead of uh, the national lockdown that was announced by the honourable prime minister. So uh, then, once the national lockdown came came into place, so uh, there were like several things that uh, the, the state started working on. One is in terms of uh, ramping up the available health infrastructure, procuring the 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 the. the 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 resources you know the N95 masks the PPE kits all the critical equipment that that suddenly uh, you know became uh, uh, very scarce resources across the country because everyone is essentially uh, trying to purchase it from the same pool of uh, resources so uh, so then then you know uh, we uh, so 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 you know so it, it it was we we had a version of the lockdown earlier so that kind of gave us a a little bit of a head start, and then you know we we start building it, build, uh, building it, uh, building up on it. So state has a uh, has a war room that's been established at Koima, which 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 has been directly uh, supervised by the chief minister's office. It's headed by the uh, chief secretary of the state, and uh, uh, you know we were given a series of measures uh, to follow and put in place in all the districts in order to ensure that there's there's no uh, no no problem in terms of our uh, you know. Essentially, in terms of formulating uh, district-wise 
COVID-19 uh, uh, responses. So, so you have like a broad strategy, and then then the districts go on and add their own elements to uh, to the to the to the to the strategy. So, uh, should I now like focus on what what we we've been doing no, in, in no, district? No. So I just wanted to know like when the uh, COVID-19 outbreak started, right. what part of the community did it affect, and how? I mean, like there are a lot of artisans and handicraft makers in Nagaland, right? Also, the aggregation society. So, you tell me in your own words as to how it affected them and uh, what did COVID nineteen do to these people and how it affected them, and so that's what I want to know from now. Sure. So, so uh, you know, as as I told you, the majority of uh, the population here uh, is, is dependent on agriculture. So, so there was a brief period where uh, you know uh, the villages also stopped agriculture because. Uh, People had been hearing about the, the the pandemic, you know. They've been following it for quite some time. So it was not that uh, people they got unawares when when the whole situation, you know, the number of cases started to rise in India. Uh, so uh, so sorry, just one second, please. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so uh, once that happened, obviously there was there was a sudden uh, disruption in the uh, supply chain itself. I mean, I'll talk about talk about the normal. Uh, day to day livelihood and then and then the livelihood per se right okay. right so, right so so uh, you had a, such, a, a certain situation where there were there were certain disruptions put in place in the essential uh, the, the supply chain so once once the disruptions happen so uh, uh, one of the first priorities of not only the state uh, not, not only the administration but also the people who's ensuring that um, you know the essential commodities were available continuously because any break uh, with 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 the uh, with the 21 day lockdown, which was version 1.0 of the of the lockdown, so would 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 have proven costly. So that was that was uh, one of the immediate challenges that not only people but also the the the, the state apparatus had to face. Uh, uh, then you know an associated problem was the price control, uh, price rise control in the price rise because my district is essentially dependent on Assam for most of its essential commodities. So they were there was price rise at source. So we had to constantly cross reference our prices against what was uh, the one that's prevailing at source and then you know add to the transport costs and everything and then constantly keep updating our prices. So uh, we managing the price rise was 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 a major challenge. And of course there was certain price rise but then by and large we were able to control it uh, by constant coordination with, with the people uh, in, in Assam. So uh, the other part was so the agriculture since most of them are dependent on agriculture. There, there was a brief period where where agricultural activities had stopped because uh, uh, a, a, everyone took to be lockdown measure very very seriously. So uh, beyond a point, the Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India, they had come out with a notification allowing uh, agricultural activities to go on. So with with social distancing norms and and certain other prescribed guidelines. So uh, that that sort of got back agriculture on its feet. Since most of them are dependent on agriculture, we didn't have much of a hit that way. So there was an inter intervening period where it didn't happen. But then after that, uh, it started back, and yeah, people started producing their own food. So we didn't we didn't face much of an issue. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, were there any challenges for the local population when uh, the state was hit with the COVID nineteen outbreak? Were there any challenges which the local population faced? Challenges for the local population, you know, one was. Uh, uh, the lockdown. I mean, people were, were obviously not allowed to move out freely. So uh, uh, the uh, so so the, the 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 problem that the people felt was, you know, how do they access the essential services if their movement was restricted? So uh, so so uh, that. Hello. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me, please? I think we uh, there was a connection problem. I couldn't see you. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so yes. Me again, the problems faced by right. the uh, local population. Yeah. Yeah, they they were they were uh, certain challenges that the uh, people faced, and uh, on the on the one hand, and the administration faced on the other hand. So one was you know sudden restriction in terms of their movement. Uh, that was one major issue. So uh, in terms of accessing essential services. Uh, that was one part. The other part of the problem was uh, uh, a certain amount of price price rise that that happened. So uh, that was one one uh, one issue that they faced, uh, which which you know uh, to a certain extent was inevitable because there was price rise at source. 
because Assam uh, sort of you know got a lot of its rice from West Bengal, and because of the lockdown, th that the, the the supply chain disruption happened there. So so uh, that was one of the issues, and uh, of course I mean those who had uh, their the livelihood was dependent on uh, opening up of the shops on a daily basis, so they did face problems. So that that was one major issue, and then of course uh, the daily wage on a source. They they had they did face issues initially because their source of livelihood was 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 uh, you know was temporarily uh, halted, and uh, you know those who migrant laborers who were working uh, in 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 Nagaland suddenly they had to stop work and they were, they were just confined to their location. So yeah, that was another another issue that the uh, that, that the people here right. faced. What problems and what problems did you all face as as the administration? Sure. So, so I'll uh, there, there are five parts to it. Okay, I mean this this particular you know, the thing. Problem, is, the administration phase and then yeah. 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 So the challenges that we faced, the administration phase was I I can talk about it in five different uh, you know from five different angles, so to say. First is was enforcing the lockdown itself because uh, this is something that was new to people. So suddenly you know you're restricting their their movement and and uh, uh, you know we, we were putting in place a series of steps. You know maintain social distance, don't come out if it's not necessary, and so on and so forth. So uh, enforcing the lockdown itself is one of the issues that we faced. The second is uh, um, if if you want you don't want people to come out, then you need to take the services to them. Right, so putting in place a mechanism where you brought uh, the services to their homes, uh, uh, doorsteps. So that was that was that was like the second challenge. The third would be uh, the uh, keeping the essential commodities flowing and keep keeping the district adequately stocked. And then uh, associated problem was the the price control uh, that that had to happen. Uh, the fourth challenge was was putting in place preparatory measures, uh, not only from from a Department of Health and Family Welfare point of view, in terms of you know how to respond to uh, cases, but also uh, uh, from a point of view of preparing the community itself, because if this this if, if we are to get over this, the it, it has to be a unified response where the community will have to play a major role. So uh, not only the villages but also all wards of all towns. So we had to train them and prepare them in terms of what all steps they need to take. Should there be a case detected, and the fifth. And and the last but not the least important uh, issue was was you know ensuring that the welfare measures reached the people who needed the most uh, uh, in a timely manner and also an adequate measure. So these these would be the five major challenges that we sort of face. And and these are one uh, one one other challenge that we we'll also you know talk about is. Uh, you know the long-term strategy that the district will have to put in place in terms of uh, ensuring a behavioral change in people because uh, the once the lockdown is lifted, uh, the virus is not going to go away. So no one knows what the end game is. So you need to prepare yourself and then prepare some more and and also prepare the people simultaneously. So yeah, that's, okay. that's pretty much it. Okay. And so uh, could you tell me uh, how did you uh, reach solutions? What were the solutions that you and your team uh, found out and implemented in Nagaland? Sorry, can can you come again, please? Could you could you talk about? Could you tell us about the uh, solutions that you all found out and implemented in the state? The solutions, the very solutions that you guys had to the problems that you've mentioned. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. So this is going to be a little detail. Is that all right? Of course, definitely. More perfect. So so let me let me uh, take up each of those challenges and then address uh, tell you as to how we we, uh -huh. we enforced each of those you know so first was the enforcing the lockdown itself so one of the first things that we did was uh, we started rationing fuel you know so only if someone had a need and uh, it was either a medical emergency or some other contingency we did not allow them free access to fuel uh, the second thing was uh, we we issued something known as a, a household permit. So every every uh, uh, household in 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 the towns where were given a permit, whereby uh, only one person from the household can uh, come out of the house uh, carrying the permit in original to purchase anything at all. You know, either to purchase essential commodities or to uh, purchase groceries or go to the bank, go to the ATMs or pharmacy. So unless and until you have this card in original, you are sent back to your home. Uh, the third thing that we did was uh, uh, ask ask people to. Uh, there was a certain point in time uh, beyond which we, we still found out that people kept coming out without any valid reason. So we banned private vehicle movement in the in the district. We we did not uh, we did not we we issued passes to people who are on COVID nineteen duty, uh, including the civil civil societies and student organizations and women organizations who uh, and the church of course you know who are actively uh, helping us uh, in, in in you know and implementing our strategy. 
So, uh, so, so this, 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 these were the steps that we took with regards to enforcing the lockdown itself. And when it comes to the villages, you know, the villages. Uh, one thing that we uh, noticed and we continue to notice is that the villages are very, very, uh, you know, they're completely aware of this, and then they're not even allowing their own people from uh, people from their village. Say, if someone was in in Mon town, if they wanted to go back to the village, they're quarantining them in the village level quarantine facilities for 14 days before letting them inside the village. So, you know, that's the level of seriousness with which they they, they take. Taking this problem, so for each village, we designated two two vehicles which would uh, come to the towns to purchase essential commodities or 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 for any other. I mean, of course, there were medical um, emergencies. Obviously, it was it was freely allowed. So uh, that that's as far as enforcing the lockdown itself. So when it comes to essential services at the doorstep, so what we started to do was uh, the first thing that we figured out was you know delivering. Home delivery of essential commodities. Now, now there's something that that could be uh, that could, that could be some, some, something is way too normal in, in big cities and and most of the urban um, uh, you know uh, uh, parts of parts of the country. But then uh, in in my my district, completely predominantly rural, 85 percent of the population is rural and only 15 percent is urban. Uh, this is something that was new. I mean, it was it wasn't tried out before. So we we did uh, tie up with a with a firm called Nagra Logistics. There's a couple of uh, young uh, young men who uh, run the service. So we tied up with them. We provided them fuel, and uh, so so that we could subsidize the delivery cost. And we we came out with an order where people could just order whatever essential commodities they wanted. I mean, uh, it, it slowly we started expanding, adding more products. I mean, from meat to uh, you know vegetables. So so that that was one part. The second was uh, people started, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, finding it difficult to access greens, green vegetables, because uh, those from the villages who usually used to come and sell it in the towns, where uh, their movement was restricted. So we tied up with the church to uh, to uh, to confront this problem. So it was a win-win solution in the sense that the church, uh, you know, we we worked out worked out a mechanism with them where they'd go to uh, various villages and collect the produce and uh, you know uh, take down the orders. So they were pre-orders. And once you uh, you figure out how much is needed for the particular week, and then you you procure it, and then they sort of deliver to the uh, to the people. So uh, that was on the uh, uh, green vegetables front. So this is this happening in five different subdivisions in the in the in the district. Uh, the third was one of the major reasons why people came out was access to banking services. So now uh, again here there were there were three different or rather four different uh, uh, strategies that we adopted. One of them is, is uh, you know, the urban ATM, so to say. So we have the banking correspondence of, of State Bank of India. So uh, so one of the things that worked in our favor was that we, we only have uh, State Bank of India and a Nagaland State Cooperative Bank. I mean, this, this could have been a little more difficult to implement if there were a large number of banks. Uh, so uh, so these banking correspondents or uh, customer service representatives, so we made, we made a schedule for them. So every week they would go to various wards and uh, you know people could withdraw it instead of coming to uh, to the to the atms in the in, in, in the uh, in the towns so uh, that was one and similarly the the same need was felt in in the villages as well so so all that the villages had to do was the village authorities uh, need, needed to call the lead bank manager so every district has a lead bank manager so once uh, he he is tied up with him so the customer service representatives from that particular area would go to the village on a on, on a specific day, and you know they would be allowed to withdraw the money uh, using a point of sale uh, machine, and uh, you know following social distancing norms and all all that. So so that was that was as far as the village is concerned. So the other other thing that we did was so there's 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 this bank known as India Post Payments Bank. I mean uh, probably not a lot of people are aware of it. I mean it's it's something that's taking off in a in a big big way. So my my district is number two in the country. Uh, in terms of you know coverage of uh, IPPB bank accounts vis-a-vis -vis the target allotted, so so we have a large number of people who have these IPPB bank accounts. Now, once you have an India Post Payments bank account, your post office essentially doubles up as a bank for you. Now, now there's a very clear difference between a post office savings account and an India Post Payments bank account. Now, India Post Payments bank account is as good as a normal bank account, and once you have you are uh, you you say say for example you are in one of these subdivisions. I have I still have four blocks where there are no banks, right? So this is our financial inclusion uh, mantra. So so we 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 we've been given a Scotch merit of order merit order award for this initiative as well. So uh, so what essentially happens is uh, these IPPB personnel who who work in the post office 
so they uh, the people can access their bank accounts uh, so they can they, once they have an ipp account it doubles up as a normal bank account suppose if if one person has a, a account in, in in with state bank of india in one of the towns but he or she lives like 100 120 kilometers away so he or she doesn't have to come to the town so from their village itself if their aadhar card is linked to their sbi account they can withdraw uh, the, uh, the the money directly you know the, they have a system known as aadhar enabled pm payment system so once uh, aadhar is linked you can automatically withdraw from your uh, um, village itself so uh, so ippb way one and then we have the common service centers uh, uh, the, the village level entrepreneurs so they also have the specialty where they have these pos machines and they they used to visit village to village as well as various wards for 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 same purpose and and the final uh, the thing was there were there were a large number of people who had their accounts in the nagaland state cooperative bank so now nagaland state cooperative bank doesn't have banking correspondence unfortunately and uh, neither can csc vlees work with them so which is why uh, uh not that they can't work with them because there's no mechanism established at this point in time so what we did with we tied up with nagaland state cooperative bank and then uh, they allow bulk withdrawals by village authorities once they have a sanction letter authorized authorization letter from the individual holding the account as well as uh, a withdrawal form you know and then it was matched against the person signature and then you know they were allowed to do it so uh, that was one and then the other one was water so we arranged a uh, water delivery uh, like 500 bucks for for 1000 liters so water was one and then gas delivery of course uh, it you it did used to happen but this now you know in, during this period it's it's regular earlier it was it was once in a blue moon but now it's it's a regular affair so gas groceries water banks uh, uh, food so pretty much everything so so that's that's the second uh, challenge the essential commodities and price control uh, uh essential commodities was was you know we 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 work closely with the moon chamber of commerce and industries to tie up with various uh sets of uh, traders in different parts of assam uh, in order to ensure that even if one person because uh, uh, many districts also kind of started rationing uh, items that were sent to other other places i mean other districts let alone other states so we had to put in place there were multiple sources from where we could we could source our materials uh, during the lockdown because uh there were there were scarcities uh, you know uh, in, in certain places so uh so that uh, we we put in the mechanism and then also uh, with regards to so again uh, one one defining feature of how we uh, ensure the travel was that there is a check gate at the start of the district so the vehicles from other states were only allowed to come till the check gate Uh, at the check gate you know we have a pool of vehicles and drivers within the district so there would be a transfer of items and only these vehicles and drivers would would ferry it within the district so uh, that's one and then with regards to the price control so we we set up uh, something known as core committee on essential commodities which uh, sort of uh, you know started uh, rationing bulk purchases by villages and wards because many wards and many uh, villages you know there there was this this tendency to buy in panic which we wanted to regulate so this committee was put in place uh, along the civil societies uh, they're also members of it and the church was a member of of, of it so so that way we could we could we could you know uh, keep keep the, uh, the the panic buying tendency at bay and uh, the price control so we had a price monitoring committee not only in the district headquarters but also the all the subdivisions and uh, we ensured that this price list was put outside each shop and if if someone had uh, you know was selling it either above the mrp or, or this this price cap uh, we publish numbers where they could directly uh, let us know and and we 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 initiated legal action against those so that's as far as essential commodities and price control is concerned and the next uh, the preparation itself you know not only the district the health and family welfare but also uh, the 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 people themselves so uh, so first was obviously augmenting you know, the capacity or or the stock of uh, critical protective gear the n95 masks the ppes as well as other protective equipment so so uh, the state was supplying uh, uh, whatever purchases was being at the state level but then we started generating resources internally we had donations from the honorable elected members uh, from the civil societies from the church from from the people themselves and then we we, we raised quite a bit of csr funding uh and and you know we started to procure our own sets of you know ppes so we 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 had ordered uh, some high quality ppes from shenzhen in china so they're reaching more uh, tonight actually 
and uh, uh, we also started buying uh, some critical uh, protective equipment i mean from a from a covid perspective so these are these wouldn't be uh, part of the standard issue of government of uh, nagaland the department of health and family welfare but we went over and above that in order to equip our hospitals and phcs and chcs so uh, that was one thing that we were doing and simultaneously uh, we uh, we did a few more things uh, is it all, all right if i can explain them, them as well of course of course please go ahead sir please of course yeah so uh, so one of the uh, so one of the things that we had to do was you know so my my district did not have a positive case but that was no reason for us to be complacent so we 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 did something known as active case search so i think so so i didn't get you could you just repeat again yeah so my district doesn't have a positive case till date uh, by god's grace doesn't have a what doesn't have a positive case till date positive case positive case again so sorry yeah so my district does not have a single positive case till date so that doesn't give us a reason to be complacent because uh, uh, you know you you never know when it's going to strike you so so we did something known as an active case search so what what the strategy essentially entails is we surveyed the entire 53000 households in the in the district so uh, we had our own questionnaire so way we were asking people uh, if you know if any of them had come from outside the outside the the, the village or the town uh, if any of them had had a travel history or any of them are, are having any of the covid symptoms you know fever breathlessness or or or, or run, uh, running nose uh a cough and uh then we also surveyed people on whether they had hypertension or diabetes or any other critical illnesses you know because the comorbidities from a comorbidity point of view uh we also asked people whether if, if anyone was pregnant or anyone above 60 years of 60 years of age or anyone below 10 years so you know all these high risk uh people at high risk we wanted to ensure that we have their complete details so that was that is why we we did this and then once we what this was done between 13th and 17th of april so once we had the data the 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 surveillance team of the district uh, catalog the entire data so we have the database of of people uh, 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 who were who were in the district at that point in time so uh, so that's that's uh, one thing that we done and apart from this uh, you know two major challenges uh, that that people sort of keep uh, facing uh, is uh, is you know uh, on 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 enforcing the quarantine and the other one would be on on contact tracing as in when there's a positive case so uh, what what we essentially uh, done as far as uh, the geo fencing uh, the, the monitoring is concerned is that so uh, so there is a bangalore based startup called intuition technologies so they they have come up with a very novel solution so they essentially into uh, you know uh, logistics you know so they track trucks that travel across the across the country so when when the situation started they adopted this solution to to help track uh, people who are under quarantine so uh, it, it, we we have access to a real real time dashboard where we can see where the particular person is at this point in time and and the the beauty of the uh, solution is that it even works on feature phones you don't need a smartphone so most solutions uh, need need a smartphone you uh, they app based essentially uh, so this one doesn't need that so uh so this this solution is live and there there's also a, a cambridge massachusetts based uh, uh um company called infinite analytics so uh, we 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 are going to sign an mou and nda with them very very shortly so uh so they provide rapid contact tracing solutions so you know it it uses a combination of artificial intelligence deep learning and data analytics uh to to uh, rapidly uh, 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 you know identify uh, uh, contacts of people who turn out to be positive so it's it's it's, it's a very advanced uh, technology that we use so that's one and then we also have our own district app you know it's it's called also so uh, there's the arok setu app uh, government of india for for contact tracing essentially and uh, then the state uh, nagaland has a n covid 19 nagaland app where you know people coming in from outside they register themselves and then they sort of update their health status daily and then we have our own district app which combines uh, the features of uh, which has the features of the uh, nagaland state app where you know you can uh, register yourself and then you keep updating your health status daily so whether you have you update your temperature you update whether you have a cough uh, you update whether you have a uh, you have you you have breathing difficulties and so on 
So apart from that, there we push in a lot of district specific resources, you know, all the orders that, that we come out with, uh, various educational videos that we've come out with, you know, IEC material and, and details about what are the various, where, where are the various facilities, where are the quarantine facilities, where are the isolation uh, um, uh, you, you know, centers and, and so on, you know, so a lot of district specific stuff there. So. Uh, so that was one and also we you know like most most places in the country uh, we also had a sample collection booth where uh, you know we, we there was a glass interface uh, between the patient and the person uh, whose sample is being taken so that was not, we were the first in the state to complete that and then then uh, other six followed suit uh, so this was as far as the preparation goes and then you know how we use technology and uh, big data to solve this uh, the, the limitations of of tracing people and so on and uh, the final part was the welfare measures so you know, welfare measures so th they were they were like you know several things that was done so government of nagaland on their part uh, uh, was uh, you know had given uh, the ration uh, rice the commodities for two months in advance so that was one and then apart from that the nagaland state disaster management authority had uh, issued a relief rice for a free distribution to people who needed the most and um, then apart from that, uh, the government of India, Honorable Prime Minister, the PMGKAY, the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyanani Yojana, where people were given five kgs of rice per month, uh, uh, you know, for three months and, and one kg of dal. So that was one. And then we also had our own food bank, you know. So we started uh, uh, um, people, they were, they, were, they were a good Samaritans who sort of donated towards the food bank. The church was a major contributor. Um, so we, we, apart from helping people who, uh, uh, who, 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 who were helped directly through the government channels, we also had our own, own source to help uh, people. So we started uh, giving them uh, a dry relief and once it got over, we replenished it and, you know, uh, so that's one. And then also the government eventually came up with a package for migrant laborers. So, you know, a, a rather comprehensive uh, set of, you know, items, uh, which, which would last them perhaps a couple of weeks or so so that that was also the government itself had made it for all the migrant laborers and daily wage earners so that was that was one and you know we, we continue to keep doing this and then uh, one of the challenges that we face and we continue to face is actually there are two one is uh, there are a lot of non-ration card holders so you know getting them help uh, many of them have applied for the ration card but it's yet to come through so uh, they're like caught in the middle so uh, focusing we, we focus a lot on them we focus a lot on uh, migrant laborers daily wage earners uh, um, you know destitute people orphans uh, widows uh, elderly citizens so all of them were our focus areas when it comes to uh, uh, giving them this relief and we're also tying up with a foundation known as the world health group so uh, what what they essentially do is they they have they already <clears throat> we have an app in place where anybody who needs uh, help. Uh, the individual yeah. for a while again uh, through the bad connection. You can just from the WHO the the introduction. Yeah, w, uh, the World Health Group. So uh, so they have an app in place where you know anyone who needs help. Can either uh, you know uh, um, 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 put in a request through the app, or uh, uh, there's also a call center which we've deployed where people can just call and say that they need help, and we we get notifications and we have to like you know sort of uh, um, uh, um, redress the grievance in a timely manner. So this is this is something that we we going to go live shortly. Uh, most of the, uh, the the mechanism has been put in place. This we wanted to do because there were a lot of people who were not able to reach us as well. So. And, and this, this is one mechanism where people from the rest of the country, NGOs operating elsewhere as well, could, could help people in my district. So uh, so that was one. And yeah, so that's broadly, you know, the challenges and how we tackle them. Yeah. All right. And sir, so uh, what is the plan I, as soon as the lockdown ends or what is the exit strategy for your state, for your district? What is it that you have in mind? How would you go about it? Sure. So, so, so. All this while, it's been very graded our response, you know, so even even now, so government of India, the guidelines are very clear that you you are allowed to uh, make it stricter, but you can't dilute it. 
so uh, so every district has its own version so for example private vehicle movement is still banned in my state so we we essentially want to change one variable at a time you know so so once once the government relaxed certain norms on 3rd may so we started shops to be opened up uh, we still have certain shops where there's high risk of infection we still keeping them closed certain uh, a few few categories of shops of course in saloons restaurants uh, um, eateries and so on you know th th those is, those still uh, remain closed and uh, you know now we 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 in the phase where people uh, the intra district movement of people has been enabled and it's over inter district movement is also over now we we waiting for people who are going to the return in from other states you know from red uh, green and orange zone so so now we want to maintain status quo till all these people come in and and are and are uh, accommodated in quarantine centers and a certain time uh, time uh, el elapses so uh, so uh, so uh, it, the sealing of the borders everything will 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 Uh, sorry the, the relaxation will happen very very gradually as a matter of fact we still ask uh, you know people who want to bring commodities from outside be it for the hardware stores or you know for any any construction that's happening we still request them to uh, do a transfer at the gate so that people from outside the state don't come in because you know you you're getting cases in green zones also suddenly so we we don't want to take the risk so anything that we want to do is is going to be extremely gradual right all right thank you sir that was uh... very nice to know about the only development that's happening now and this is personally what i'm telling you i mean i'm stuck in mumbai and mumbai is looking really really bad at the moment so uh, i mean the initiative is taken by you is amazing so yeah like, yeah thank you thank you very kind of you i think i'm done with the interview uh, what i would require from your end if you could please help me out with some pictures and videos of nagaland of the things that you've talked about of rather of the banking uh, so you sure, talked sure. about banking, where they went to the districts so pictures and videos sure. of have you talked about sure. if you could just i mean personally sure. or busy i'm sure if you could have someone just uh, coordinate with me that'll be great will will do that please will do that please no problem at all all right so thank you so much uh, thank you for giving me your time i'm so sorry i couldn't connect yesterday i mean the, the my uh, connect current went off total i am from calcutta by the way you are from calcutta yes i am a bengali oh. that is wonderful Anyway, thank you so thank you so much for your time i'll get back to you if i need anything else all right sir absolutely please absolutely okay, thank you bye sir bye sir have a nice day bye bye